not in as many different ways, but the political instability is exacerbating those issues. So from your perspective, just politically, why are our coalitions in the city so unstable? What needs to be done to change? Because that's a political problem, that's an individual behavior problem, it seems to me. Um, and to be honest, there's no reason why we, we should not have a one-seat or two-seat party holding the mayorship. That's a failure of both the ANC and the DA that we are in this situation. Because you're the two biggest parties, you've got the mandate. So why are we in this situation politically? Please let me know. I'm going to start with you, Councillor Villeneuve, and then you, Councillor Thank you, Prof. Um, let me start by saying we have recently introduced the bill uh, to put a threshold uh, in Parliament. Uh, our our um, MPs have put it, Orlunsugi, uh, where Karube has put in a, a, a bill to put a threshold on the, on the percentage, 1% uh, of the parties to hold positions. Um, based on the number of votes we got. That's the first thing. So that's a step uh, in starting to find solutions. Um, the DA, we do not believe that the party, on the, in 2021, the residents have spoken. They are not happy with the party that were in government in full majority for almost 30 years. We do not believe that the party that have created the problems where people have now said we are not happy and we'd rather vote for smaller parties, is going to be able to assist to fix the problem, the people who created the problem. And that is one of the reasons why the DA has negotiated with other parties who are like-minded to sit in these, um, to obviously take over government. One of the challenges we have is that when these negotiations happened at the time, obviously it's a new experience, for everybody, and some of the smaller parties, and even some of the ANC-related uh, uh, parties, in, are more interested in positions instead of agreeing on the principle of what we need, you know, what we agree on, and service delivery related. Which is why. It was the second round of doing Which is why, but, but remember, in 2021, it was slightly different as well because there were more parties. Remember 2016, there were parties, but it wasn't as big. The votes weren't as split as it was in 2021. So it is a different experience where you would now have 18 political parties inside council. The DA had to, uh, to negotiate with about uh, 9 or 10 political parties to get a share of the vote because we realize that we're sitting with problems that we found and the people who created those problems are not going to assist us to fix those problems. And those are some of the reasons why we had to sit down and negotiate. But at the same time, one of the, uh, a portion of the bill that is introduced, a component is the time to negotiate for coalitions is very short. And that is why we've done these benchmarking exercises to go to Denmark, to go to Kenya, to go to different parties, uh, uh, different countries where coalitions work. Germany, other countries where the coalitions work, to, to try and see what they have done that we can do differently. But at the same time, we need a bit more time to negotiate, and that is what this bill is trying to do for us. I do agree with you that the negotiations should be based on uh, principles, values, and service delivery with having the citizen in mind. And unfortunately, when you negotiate with so many parties, people are only interested in what positions they get, which is one of the reasons the DA has proposed that the council be dissolved and the citizens get the opportunity to go back to the drawing board and we believe we'll get a different outcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Well, uh, Prof, the, so 
federal principle, so I don't think it's not been able to manage conditions properly. So we work to be faithful. We are in a coalition as the ANC with some of the parties. Uh, we have to be frank and honest. Not everything is going to score. So it's important to say that uh, English sometimes does run away. <laughs> now, it is not as stable as you, you want it to be. Even currently in our own quality, and it will be defeating for me to say everything is just one. And within ourselves, we have different one ideological stance, different interests and needs. And as a result of all those competing needs, we find ourselves in most instances not being a, a unified and cohesive government. And this is as a result that you now see Johannesburg as if it's a federal government. Mm -hmm. uh, different political parties doing things differently. Uh, for example, uh, it's a government policy. I can't go to government platforms in political regalia of my party mm -hmm. because of government. But today it happens. You see mayoral committee members in political regalia in official government programs, which indicates that there's a problem. Because one, it means we're not respecting the systems act or the laws that governs municipality uh, 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 or local government. You know? So it is true, we are not as cohesive as we should be. We try to balance and negotiate ourselves to create an environment in which we can work better. Uh, but there are always contradictions. At times, those contradictions are lack of understanding of what government should be doing, and how we should be doing in government work, and why are we in government. For some of the parties there, they think it's a uh, it's something else, and, 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 and we should be factual about that. Others saw an opportunity uh, to gain access to state resources, and it's not a lie. We see it on our daily engagements. I think it now looks as if we are after the press mm. of government. Mm. Now, I'm raising this thing because I thought. If we are to build the city, we have to be honest, frank, and open. Otherwise, we are missing a point. It will be just bigger in between the DA and the ANC, which are bigger parties. Because if we want to go into history, we can go into before 2016. And all of you are residents of Johannesburg, and you knew that it was the most high performing municipality in the entire country. The only biggest challenge you always had was the billing accuracy. Yes. That was the biggest issue that yes. Johannesburg had. Mm. We never had yes. issues with infrastructure, with the whole lot of issues. Yes. Now, we must move forward. We can't continue and say, hey, the DA did this. In fact, if you ask society today, that if we were to sterilize local government, the ANC and the DA must run this coalition. Yes, yes, now, yes. That's what society is saying. <laughs> yeah, the new kid in the block, uh, they, they still have a lot to learn about what governance is. And this is a, it's because the DNA agency has acquired over the years particular experience to understand how to manage. In fact, they account for about 48 wards in Johannesburg. The ANC accounts for 85 wards. Now, it means those are the parties that are giving mandate to govern. But of course our legislation has to change to our ideological positions between the two of us needs to change and we must find a way of what we do in the interest of what our communities want. They do believe we can govern better. 
then this is all cancel, but do the right thing for people. Thank you very much. Um, I thought, yeah, I know you want to respond uh, to, to that, and I'll give, you a mo I'll give you a chance in just a moment. I mean, I do think that we overstate the need for ideological coherence between coalition partners in South Africa. I mean, if you look at the current German National Coalition, it's the Socialists, it's the Greens, and it's a far um, free market um, party. That's the, the three big coalition partners. It's Socialists, it's Greens, and then it's free marketeers. The chair, so they share very little ideological alignment, but are able to agree on specific things. You know that there's things that you won't agree on, and you don't try to agree on them. You decide what it is that you can agree on. You give each other the portfolio. So the Greens have um, international relations and they have the environment. Socialists have the chancellorship. Uh, the free market have the have finance. And that's what you've agreed on. And then that's what you move with. So this idea that you need perfect ideological alignment to be able to form a coalition, I think is something that needs to and it's not just change in the minds of politicians, but also in the minds of us as voters and, and residents and citizens. But also to be transparent about the grounds on which you are going into coalition with somebody else. And I think that that's part of the confusion for residents, is we don't know why y'all are in these coalitions at any given point. Um, what have you traded off with each other for things? We don't know, it's completely opaque. Uh, but then I'm going to give you a chance um, can I actually ask this next set of questions because it's going to help you answer this question that, or, or to make the comment that you want to make, I think, in response. Okay, so the second set of questions I want to ask is JCA has um, wrote to the president, made a number of suggestions around how to get over the political hurdles that uh, are being faced. First suggestion was dissolving the council and triggering new elections um, and allowing voters to have a say again and provide a fresh mandate to whoever else. Second suggestion was um, of considering placing the municipality under administration, which comes with a lot. Uh, and I would think is probably the least desirable option, but it's an option that was, that was, uh, that was put on the table. And then the third one, and I think this is not just a, a short-term thing, but is a medium to long-term as we look towards the 2026 elections, is um, actually changing the executive model. The Municipal Structures Act provides two ways that you can run a municipality. You can run a municipality through an executive mayor, which is what we currently have in the city of Johannesburg, um, with, with, with NMCs, or you can run a municipality through an executive committee that reflects the power sharing within a council and spreads executive power amongst the biggest parties in a municipality. And it seems that that would be, and that's an option that's there, it can be used, it's a choice whether you use it or not. But that that would mitigate some of this power battles for particular positions um, using the executive committee system. So I would like to put to ask you both, what do you think of those suggestions? And Belinda, I'll, I'll allow you to respond to uh, to that uh, in your response. To me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Let me start by saying, first of all, we take off the dissolution of council because in the short term, while things are falling apart, um, I think we've been clear that changing mayors is not going to work uh, in the city of Joburg, and that is why we said that dissolve the council and allow residents to another bite at elections. That's the first thing. Um, I'll get to the rest, but I just want to respond uh, to Councilor Barredo, uh, the MOC, in terms of um, the number of wards that the VA has. Um, it's very ironic that when we ask for these kind of engagements, 
uh, with the MMC and the MMCs um, that the, the DA who is, for example, the, the, the second and highest number of, of wards that are ward councillors <coughs> do not get an opportunity to engage. We are ignored when we ask to be engaged. And we're saying it's not about, yes, we defer, we can fight in council, but when we ask for engagement, engage us so we can tell you what residents are feeding through to us. It's not only DA members who live in DA wards. They are all from all political parties, and once you become a ward councillor, you actually have to service everybody. And in fact, most of the ANC members in our wards are complaining about the ANC at the moment because they just want services. So they're asking, we pay for rates, we pay taxes, but the services that we see on the ground, our lived experience are not what it is. And we say, engage on a person to person or, or uh, service delivery related matters regularly. We, the IDP currently, engagements have been an absolute shame. There were residents who called us while we were sitting in that IDP session, who, by the way, contribute a chunk to the city's coffers to be able to service places that are undeveloped. You cannot ignore uh, areas that are formal and give a chunk of the vote that only need mainly repairs and maintenance and tell us you cannot